Good day, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual classroom. For our science discoveries episode for today, we will be learning electron configuration. So let's get started. today is about electron configuration. So what is electron configurations? So when we say electron configurations, this is telling us that in which orbitals the electrons for an element are located. So you have your nucleus here, let's say sodium, and then you have your one, which is your orbital position, and you have your sublevel SPDF, and then two, three, four, and so on. Electron configuration follow three rules. Number one, electrons fill the orbital starting from the lowest end, which is one, and moving forward. Number two, no two electrons can fill up one shell. And number three, for a degenerated orbitals, electron first fill each orbital singly. So let's say these are your subshells. So it will fill up first singly and then comes back and fill up the second electron. This is according to Hund's rule. Now this is how we fill up the diagrams for a sublevel. So we have 1s followed by 2s, that's 2p as well, 3s, 3p, 3d. 4s, 4p, 4d, 5s, 5p, 6s, and so on and so forth. Now, when you fill this up, it has to be 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, and so on. This is according to Aufbau principle. So let's take, for example, our electron configuration, how it is being written. The electron configuration of an atom is a shorthand method of writing the location of electrons by sublevel. So what you can see here, the sublevel is written followed by a superscript with a number of electrons in the sublevel. So if it is in the 2p, 2 is your energy level, which is your n. P is your energy sublevel, and 2 on the superscript is your number of electrons. If the 2p sublevel contains 2 electrons, it is written as 2p to the power of 2. When writing electron configuration, the first we determine how many electrons are in the atom. For example, iron. Iron has an atomic number of 26. Therefore, there are 26 electrons. We have to arrange the energy level based on the sublevel according to increasing energy. So for this case, we have to fill iron as 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 6, 3s, 2, 3p, 6, 4s, 2, and that is 10, 20. So since it's only 26 electrons, then you have 3d, 6. The sum of the superscript would equal to the atomic number of your iron. So let's look at the periodic table. The periodic table can be used as a guide for electron configuration. The periodic number, as you would see here, on the side is the value of your n or the orbit. Group 1a, 2a are the s orbital. Group 3a to 8a are your p orbital. Groups 3b until 2b will be your d orbital and the lanthanide and actinide series will be your F orbital. Now, 
if you would look at these examples, sojum belongs to the S orbital or group 1A. Sodium's number of electrons or its atomic number is 11. So when we write it, we would be expecting there will be a sum of 11 superscripts and the last one will be an S. So you have sodium, which is 11, will be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. That's a 10. So therefore, we have 3S1. That's a total of 11. Another example, we have chlorine. Chlorine belongs to the P orbitals or you have your group 3A to 8A. Chlorine has 17 as an atomic number or its number of electrons. So when we write this down, this will be Cl17 would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p. So since that's 10 plus 2, that is 12. So we only need 5 to make it 17. Therefore, the electron configurations of Cl will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Then we have nickel. Now nickel belongs to the d orbital or the groups 3b to 2b. The number of electrons or the atomic number of nickel is 28. So nickel which has 28 as an atomic number, will be written in terms of electron configurations as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that is 10, all right? 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, that is 20. Therefore, 3d will only have eight now just to wrap up everything s can only fill to two electrons p can fill to six electrons d can fill to 10 electrons and our f can fill to 14 electrons i hope that you have learned something today about electron configuration Thank you and see you next time. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you're new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our science discovery series. Bye!